The world is currently in the midst of a new pandemic that has arisen. No matter what newspaper you read, website you check, or people you speak to, the topic of this new pandemic is the most discussed topic at the moment. Throughout history, there has been a number of different pandemics that have battered Europe and the world. Spanish flu following the First World War was an unusually deadly pandemic, with over 500 million people being infected worldwide. The death toll for this specific outbreak was estimated from 17 million to 50 million, with some suggesting it could even be as high as 100 million. History's most famous pandemic, however, though, has to be the Black Death that broke out in the 14th century. Known as the Plague, or even the Pestilence, it resulted in the deaths of an estimated 75 million to 200 million people in Eurasia, with a peak in Europe between the years 1347 and 1351. Probably originating in Central or Eastern Asia, the Black Death travelled along the Silk Road, mostly likely being carried by fleas that would live on the back of black rats that travelled on the Genoese merchant ships that would reach the rest of Europe's docks. The Black Death was particularly brutal, estimating to have killed between 30-60% to 60 of Europe's population, and it would take 200 years for Europe's population to recover. However, today, we're told to isolate ourselves from the pandemic that's currently affecting the world. However, how would medieval medicine deal with this pandemic? Today, we look at the cures and prevention to illness which were used in the medieval period. Remember to support our channel, make sure to subscribe. In the medieval period, many people today seem to consider it to be a time of no progress or of medical stupidity in regards to cures and treatments. There were two main theories on illness that dictated the way treatment was administered. The first theory derives from the ancient Greek physician Hippocrates. His theory of the four humours was that the body featured four main humours or substances that were needed to remain in balance for someone to remain well. If these humours were unbalanced though, one would become poorly or ill. These humours were later linked to popular cultural ideas like astrology or the four seasons. The other theory that dominated medieval medical treatment was Galen's ideas on the theory of opposites. Galen was a Roman physician who built upon Hippocrates' ideas by applying some common sense. His theory of opposites stated that if one of the humours was unbalanced that would make you feel cold, you would treat this by using warmth and heat, e.g. going to bed and staying warm. Also, if you had a fever and were burning up, you would need to eat something cool, like a cucumber. Galen's ideas dominated medieval medicine due to the control of the church. The Roman physician's ideas on the soul and other aspects were liked and tied into the Catholic Church's teachings, and at the time, the church controlled education as well, so only Galen's ideas could be taught. Now in terms of medical treatments, the medieval period is famous and notorious for a number of brutal methods. If you were ill, there was very little chance you would have to be able to visit a trained physician, as these were reserved for the rich and highly educated. Also trained physicians sometimes had very little experience in regards to actually diagnosing issues, and their knowledge came mostly from books, rather from time spent observing patients. If you were ill during this time period, chances are you would have seen a barber surgeon. Today we associate barbers with someone who is most likely to give you a haircut, however barber surgeons were one of Europe's most common medical practitioners during the Middle Ages. Surgery was rarely done by physicians, and barbers who possessed razors and had a certain degree of coordination that cutting hair needs were the ones who would carry out a number of different medical procedures, including even amputating limbs. In this period, mortality rates were very high in surgery due to a lack of infection control and controlling blood loss. Barber surgeons would carry out some of the most popular methods of treating illness, for example bloodletting. This was where blood would be expelled out of the patient's body by using a cut. The idea of this was to let the blood out of the body in order to balance the humour that had too much inside the body, and this was linked to Hippocrates' theory. This was an extremely dangerous procedure due to the fact that barber surgeons had no knowledge on germs and wounds would regularly become infected with patients dying of poisoning, or even patients bleeding out due to a cut that was too deep. Sometimes even leeches would have been applied on a patient's body in order for them to suck the blood from a patient to balance out the humours. The other most common cure available during the medieval period was purging. This was aimed to redress the balance of the humours inside the body. 
a patient would be given a mixture that would either induce vomiting or make them excrete. Purges would result in diarrhea and a depletion of the humor black bile, with vomiting reducing yellow bile in the body. These two types of bile made up two of the four humors. One way of diagnosing illness, however, that was around during the medieval times was by examining urine. This was done by a doctor who would examine a patient's pee in a number of different and disturbing ways. They would smell, look, and even taste the weed to diagnose illness. Funnily enough, urine samples are still analyzed by doctors today. So during a pandemic or a bout of illness, medieval civilians would visit barber surgeons, however they did have options too. Apothecaries were around in medieval society, and what they would offer was a mixture of herbal remedies and ailments to a patient. Some of these materials used in medieval potions were rather dangerous and ineffective, however others such as ginger and senna are used today in certain medicinal products. There were however, a number of rogue practitioners in medieval society though, who would sell counterfeit remedies during bouts of the plague. These treatments were often very costly and sometimes dangerous if a poisonous substance was sold. If a patient during a pandemic was lucky enough to end up in hospital in medieval society, they would find a very different place to nowadays. Hospitals offered only basic care, in the form of food, drink and shelter. This care enabled the ill to regain their strength towards their recovery, however some of these places were not as effective. Later, plague houses or pest houses were created to bundle people who were dying of certain illnesses together in order to quarantine them. We've already looked at the beliefs people had about illness, for example the theory of the four humours, however the most common belief about pandemics was a supernatural one. The most common belief was that God had sent a pestilence upon his civilian population due to lots of sinning going on. Remember when we look at medieval society, religion was completely dominant and everyone's life was encompassed by God, the church, and also living a life hopefully free of sin. The idea that pandemics such as the Black Death was sent by God led to many different cures and treatments. One of the most common was self-punishment. This was usually in the form of self-flagellation, in which people would whip themselves to almost apologize to God for their sins. They would also pray heavily to apologize to God. Also around this time, other supernatural treatments were used such as charms. These magical remedies sometimes did use medicinal plants alongside them, however they only served to reassure a patient and had no medical benefit. Also astrology was used and doctors would observe the movements of planets and the signs of the zodiac to determine when to offer treatments. Some more bizarre medieval medical treatments involve lighting fires in rooms and spreading the smoke. This is to combat the miasma theory, as people believed illness was spread by bad air. Also, there's trepanning, in which a hole would be cut into someone's skull to remove pressure on the brain. During epidemics and pandemics in medieval times, also people would blame witches, the nobility, or groups who were culturally different, for example, Jewish people, and persecute them. So although today, we are in the midst of a new pandemic, you should take solace from the fact that society has moved on a great deal since the medieval period with regards to medical treatment. Imagine going to your doctor, them draining your blood to rebalance your humours, visiting a mystic who will wave some charms at you to make you feel better, or whipping yourself to apologise in the hope you would become immune. Medieval medical care, although quite negative, certainly was extremely interesting to say the least. Once again, thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Take care, look after yourselves, and once again thank you for watching.